Hey everybody, welcome to your quick traffic internet marketing masterclass. I'm Sterling Valentine, glad to have you. We're going to be talking about some ways that you can use to get some quick traffic right now. Get a pen, get a piece of paper, because we're going to be doing some real actionable stuff. A lot of the stuff that, that gets taught today is theory, but this is going to be actual battle-tested, street-proven, current, cutting-edge, state-of-the-art stuff. And the reason why I say that is because we've got a community of hundreds and hundreds of VIP students from all walks of life, all different countries, all different age groups, and we've been meeting together every week for webinars since fall of 2008. So I'm always checking in. What's working best for you for traffic? If you're using that particular site, how are you using it? What's the way that you're using it? Do you have any ad copy? To show me what you're doing because I really want to make sure that we have a results-based community, a performance-based community where we can check our stats against each other and really find out what's working the best. Now, is this the absolute most best traffic strategy known to humankind? Hey, I don't know. I just know that I represent my community and I try to keep my ear to the ground of what everybody in my community is doing. So are there other answers? Of course, there's probably other answers. But for all of us, hundreds and hundreds of people have gathered together and put our heads together and collectively tried to figure out the best strategies. Uh, I believe that we've figured out a really pretty good way where we've seen people get a hundred subscribers in a day sometimes you know so it, it can definitely work if you just keep your your uh, mind open and stay focused on what the community is doing and not just going out there and innovating and trying to do it yourself because there's no need to reinvent the wheel when other people are already working out there hard on your behalf you can just leverage what they know and we all do better when we put our heads together so let's check out our bullet points for tonight and talk about getting some quick traffic Tonight's masterclass objective is to learn advanced strategies to quickly and get to quickly get traffic flowing easily and inexpensively. Now, you'll notice that uh, I got a little typo in there, but that's how we that's how we do things around here. Fast and furious, we stick to getting the right things right, and the right thing to get right is figuring out how to get quick, quick traffic. So, uh, let's take a look at what we're going to learn. We're going to talk about where to buy clicks for pennies, uh, and it's very important to be able to make sure that in the beginning that you utilize your funds effectively look not everybody has funds to start a traffic campaign so the important thing is to use those funds wisely and to not just be buying and trying and juggling and struggling and flailing all around just throwing money at different things because frankly somebody else has tested most of this stuff so it's better to lean on other people than to just try to do it yourself and go it alone we're going to talk about how to utilize free traffic sites effectively how to find the best solo ads and ad swaps how to manage all your traffic sites in one place and how to get some viral traffic. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'd really like to start with the end in mind and talk about viral traffic from the beginning because uh, most of you are using a squeeze page. If you're not, you really should be. And one of the great things about using a squeeze page is that you're showing your page to a lot of different people, right? You're exposing your squeeze page to thousands and thousands of people. We actually are also going to talk a little bit about conversion rates. So I want to want to write that in there as well just in case I forget it's very important to understand conversions I was thinking about this earlier and I didn't want to forget to remind you guys about it so I, I love the idea of being able to double up my work whenever possible I like to get two results for the price of one so if you're using a squeeze page from list laser which is what we recommend to all our students who don't have a, currently have a squeeze page to just go to listlaser.com and get one. Then you have the benefit of also having some of your traffic that doesn't opt in, at least possibly earn you some money as a List Laser member. I don't know if you can see down here where it says click here to get your own free squeeze page just like this. So the first lesson about getting traffic is even if you don't get an opt in out of the traffic that you're exposing your squeeze page to, you may have a secondary use for it. So before we go any further, I just wanted you to understand that even traffic that you drive to your squeeze page and don't benefit from, that don't actually turn into opt-ins, can still turn into a list laser member and you know then you can get a benefit that way. So uh, I try to get you guys to get maximum use out of what you're doing. And to be honest with you, a lot of times people teach this stuff, in my opinion, a little bit backwards. They teach to take your traffic and drive it directly to product and offers. You know, like get yourself an affiliate link and go directly to a product offer. Well, what's the problem with that? The problem is if you drive traffic directly to a product offer, most of the time, most of the traffic that you're driving isn't going to convert. 
It's just the nature of the beast, you know, not all traffic converts. So if you're driving traffic to a product offer, like an affiliate link or something, what happens to all the people that don't buy it? You lose them. They're gone. And you've spent time, energy, and money to get them, and you didn't get any benefit out of them. What's worse is, if somebody who is selling a product that you're an affiliate for has decided to sneak a little sneaky squeeze page inside of their sales letter which you've seen sometimes then what's worse than just not getting any benefit out of it is you're actually driving the other guys list building so the good news is you're doing list building congratulations but the bad news is you're doing it for the wrong person so what you need to do is put a squeeze page between any traffic you drive and any product offers that you want to see you know your your prospects see and the reason that you do that is because now when you can capture them, you can have more opportunities to set, to deliver multiple products and services more often. So when you're driving traffic, make sure you're driving it to the right place. It's not just about the quantity or quality of traffic that you're driving, it's the destination that you're driving it to. And to try to drive traffic directly to a monetization offer, it's kind of like you and I standing on opposite sides of a house and each throwing a tennis ball on the count of three, hoping that we can somehow make those two balls hit each other over the roof. It's very, very difficult. It's possible, but it's very difficult, and it's not really a sustainable strategy to try to blindly throw something and hope that the thing that you're putting out there is also simultaneously, coincidentally, the thing that people want. You know, it's very challenging. So if you have more of a broad-based, generic squeeze page that can capture names and email addresses, then you have a lot more likelihood to get more yeses. It's easier to get a soft yes on a squeeze page to get a free report and then when you have that name and email address then you have the permission to send multiple product and service offers to the community that you serve so that they can choose over time which thing they want so as you can see already we've talked about traffic but we're talking about two things that are only tangentially related tangentially related to traffic but they still really really affect your traffic strategy why is it important to be able to try to get secondary usage out of your traffic with a a viral link at the bottom because it gets you more for your money. Why is it important for you to drive traffic to a squeeze page instead of directly to a product offer or an affiliate offer? Because you get more for your money. So before we go any further, I just want you to make sure that you get maximum return on the whatever investments that you're going to make. Because you know, traffic's going to cost you either time or money. It's definitely going to cost you energy either way. And I don't want to just see you go out into the wild and come back and say, yeah, I blew a whole bunch of money or a whole bunch of time and energy on traffic and I didn't get anything to show for it. And I ask people why and they say, well, I sent people to some affiliate link and I go, well, there's your problem, you know? <clears throat> and that's a shame because I think it's this is being taught incorrectly in a lot of ways and I'd prefer that you, you know, get the most out of it. So we've talked about using viral traffic and why that's effective. I want to move into getting clicks for pennies and understanding conversions. So let's take a look for a second at this slide let me see here okay so understanding conversions so you see that you send out a traffic trigger now what's a traffic trigger that could be an article a, a paid ad an interstitial ad which we'll talk about in a little bit or any kind of viral safe list or list builder or anything that you put out there anything that you do that's a traffic trigger anything that somebody trips over and has a call to action in it that says hey since you tripped over this thing whatever it is come to my site that little call to action traffic trigger is the thing that you're putting out there to get people aware of you and to, to invite them to take action to move towards you so you put out your traffic trigger and not everybody's gonna click on it and click through right so let's say for example it was uh, an article so you put an article out there and there's a little bio box at the bottom so there's a certain percentage first of all of the people who experienced your traffic trigger now not everybody who experienced your traffic trigger will click through that's the first level of loss as we call it because if you had a hundred thousand people read your article not a hundred thousand people are necessarily going to click through it right so you gotta get your numbers down. You have to understand what you're doing and understand how these things affect your final numbers, right? Because we start off with everybody in the world being a possible suspect, but we don't end up with everybody at the world in the world at the end, right? It it, it attrition's that means it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So whatever number of people see your traffic trigger, then you have a smaller percentage of those who are going to move from that traffic trigger to the click through. 
that means that only some people click through to the next phase, the next level, whatever that is. And what that would be is, let's say it's your squeeze page. So the trigger is there, they read the article, they click through to your squeeze page. Now they're on your squeeze page and they're taking a look at it. Already, we know that some of these people are not going to opt in. Some will. So your squeeze yields a certain percentage conversion to the opt-ins. So X percent of people looked at your traffic trigger and then clicked through to your squeeze page. X percent of the people on your squeeze page click through to your opt-in. So maybe you know, 25% of the people who landed on the squeeze page actually opt in. Now you're there. You've got people who've opted in. If you're doing double opt-in, then did they confirm? So from the opt-in, did they confirmation? Uh, did they approve their confirmation email? Yes or no? Sometimes people opt in on single opt-in, and then they don't finish. They don't do that extra step of yes, I approve this. And the reason for double opt-in is simple. It's because the autoresponder service is trying to protect themselves from spam complaints so anybody can sign up anybody else I could sign you up for an email newsletter somewhere and if they don't have double opt-in then that means that you'll immediately start getting that newsletter whether you wanted to or not and you'll think you got you're getting spammed so in order to protect themselves they've set up double opt-in that means that when I sign you up they'll send an email to you that says somebody signed you up if it was you, please confirm and we'll start sending them. But if it wasn't you, ignore this and don't worry about it. So they're protecting you and themselves. So if there's a confirmation email requested for a double opt-in, then it's a further percentage that you can lose that may or may not you know, come through. So once they've done that and they've double opted in, now they're confirmed. But how many have actually opened any particular email? And we talk about the open rate here right so on any particular email that you send let's say you've got a confirmed list of 200 double opt-in members and each one of those has opted in and then they've confirmed it too so you know that they really want it if you have a 10 percent open rate that means that when you send the email maybe 20 people out of the 200 actually open it so you can see that not everybody is always doing everything that you think and I think that's one of the biggest beginner mistakes when they talk about traffic is that they say I drove thousands of people to this website you know and and, is, and they expect as if you know thousands of people would have bought their product but there's so many levels to go through people don't really realize traffic and conversions how much they have to do with each other so they end up having unrealistic expectations of what's happening you know I, I drove 5,000 people but I didn't get 5,000 sales well yeah you because you had not everybody opted in and then every out of everybody who opted in not everybody converted and then out of the people who converted and confirmed you know you lose some along the way so you have to understand this ahead of time so that you end up with net numbers at the end that match what you want driving thousands in the beginning doesn't help if you only end up with 10 or 15 on the back end so you want to drive enough on the front end so that the numbers on the back end match what you want so I hope you're starting to understand this so now that we have an open rate somebody opened up your email we still have opens to click through rate now remember we talked about click through before at the very top here we talked about click through on the trigger so the traffic trigger whatever it is the article or something like that if uh, you know a hundred thousand people looked at it but a thousand people clicked through there's your click through from your article to your squeeze page now we're in the email box of people who've already opted in confirmed if necessary and now we're looking at how many people are actually going to click through on the call to action that your email provides so we've confirmed our email we get an email do we open it okay let's say these people open it yes it's open so now out of all the people who have opened it what percentage of people click through versus what's the alternative the alternative is close the email and not click through right see how each one is a little choice point so then the final layer here is out of the people who have clicked through what's the next step well if it's a sales letter now we look at the conversion to sales so if you had a hundred people let's say you had 200 people open your email as we said before out of the 200 people 10 percent click through 
So that's 20. Then out of those 20 people who click through, maybe you got a sale. Maybe. Maybe more, maybe less, maybe none. And that would be a 5% conversion rate on the sales letter. You see, 5% of the people, in this case, 5% of the people who click through to the sales letter actually purchase one out of 20. So if you can, you know, pause this if you want to, write these down, start to understand these layers, then you'll know, let's say you wanted to make, let's just be real basic for the sake of argument, one sale every month of $27. What, let's say you wanted to make a $27 sale a month. And of course, if you wanted to make 10 times that or 100 times that, then you would just multiply the numbers I'm going to give you. But let's say you wanted a grand total of one, all right? So if you have a sales letter that has you know, a 5% conversion, then you'd need 20 people to click through. And if you have, let's say, a 50% click-through rate on your email, then you'd need 40 people to open it in order for the half of them to click through, right? And if 40 opened it, then you'd need, at a 10% open rate, you'd need 400 people on your list, right? And in order to get 400 people on your list, you can see where this is going, right? Uh, 400 people on your list maybe come from a 10% conversion rate sales letter, which means you'd need to drive 4,000 people to your sales letter, right? So, it, And that depends, of course, on the quality of the traffic. So I hope you're understanding how to build the bridge backwards from what you want to end up with here back all the way to the beginning to your triggers. Understanding traffic and conversions from the back to the front is the way to ensure that you're putting enough volume in on the front end here so that you end up with the numbers you want on the back end. Don't just think, I sent 50,000 people. Something must be wrong because I didn't get 50,000 sales. Now that you see how the layers go, it makes a big difference. So let's get back to our bullets for a few minutes. So I want to show you a place where you can buy click for, for pennies. It's a really great site. We've been using it off and on for about a year. It's working very well and I have a redirect on it just in case for some reason by the time you view this it has changed and we've moved on to a different site I'll redirect the, the redirect we use to that site so the name of the place is right here flyad.me and it does something very interesting it does what's called interstitial ads And I want to talk to you a little bit about this because I don't think people understand the power of interstitial advertising. This is probably the quickest, easiest, and least expensive way to get traffic, but it just takes a little bit of mastery because it's a little bit of a unique beast. So if you, the more you can understand it, the more you can use it effectively. So if you've ever used a URL shortener, you'll understand what I want to say, and if you haven't, I'll make it real easy. If you've ever used Twitter or someplace where you have a limited number of characters and you've ever wanted to send a really, really long, long URL, a long domain name, like cnn.com slash oil tanker explodes slash you know, environmental news or something, that's really, really long to send to somebody. But if you can use a URL shortener, it will change it to like uh, h1.ly dot slash you know, 123. That's like a shortened link right there. It's a made up one, but do you see how that's so many fewer characters than the really long one, a CNN dot whatever, whatever, whatever. That, that thing could be 100 characters long. So you don't have a lot of room when you type on Twitter. So you want to make sure you shorten URLs. So people are using URL shorteners, free public services that you go and put a really long link in and it yields you, it converts it to a really, really short link. Well, the people at Flyads decided that they were going to monetize their URL shortening service. It's a free service, but when people go there to, uh, you know, shorten an ad, shorten a, a domain name, excuse me, they come back with a link that shows an ad before it shows the actual site. So if you sent me this link to the oil tanker article, and I click this link, instead of just redirecting straight to the oil tanker article, it first redirects to an interstitial ad. Interstitial is just a fancy way for saying in between. An ad that comes up in between me clicking and then me seeing the oil tanker article. And it's on a timer, so it doesn't last forever. It lasts for a couple seconds, it counts down, and then it says, okay, you can skip this. Perhaps you've seen these before. 
that kind of interstitial advertising is powerful because you get to reach an incredibly large volume of people for a very, very tiny, tiny fractional price. So the downside with using interstitial ads is that it's not targeted at all. It's it's cold traffic. And you know the, the difference between cold and warm traffic is warm traffic is more likely to convert. Colder traffic is less likely to convert. So in this case, you're interrupting uh, a flow from one ad, you know, from one click to one let's say news article people aren't expecting an ad so your conversions per thousand are going to be lower than let's say somebody who saw a video of yours on YouTube and then click through that's going to be a higher conversion why because they're warmer towards you they know you they were expecting it they're already in the search for something like this so don't let the lower percentage conversions bother you because on places like interstitial ad sites like Adfly it's really really inexpensive and cheap because they're already getting the traffic anyway so they just pass the savings on to you and they show this ad so even if you get one out of a thousand to opt in it costs you so so little and when you go and see the prices you'll be shocked it's extremely cost effective uh, I once used it to put about 100 subscribers on my list in about 12 hours and I think I spent maybe 10 bucks so uh, I can't promise that outcome for everybody but I just want to give you a, a sense of how easy and inexpensive it can be and how quick to use interstitial advertising so we found that for people who start off with no subscribers, no no traffic whatsoever, that using a paid interstitial advertising site like FlyAds is probably the single greatest way that you can get from zero to a hundred subscribers right away. Why is it important to focus on one at a time? Well that's because there are so many different ways that you can drive traffic. <coughs> Excuse me that it's actually dangerous in the beginning because you could be all over the place trying all these different traffic strategies without really understanding or having mastery at any particular one you're almost doomed for failure so that way we keep our blinders on if you've ever seen a horse uh, draw like a horse and carriage you know where people go on romantic rides and these little horse and buggies they have those blinders on the side of the horse's eyes they put these little square things on so that people the horses can't see other people people don't distract them movement doesn't distract them and they just stay focused they have tunnel vision moving forward so that's what I want you to do when you're trying to get some quick traffic to start off your list building is to have tunnel vision moving forward you can do whatever you want you can try 50 different strategies but I found consistently that my students who focus on one traffic strategy at a time do a lot better a lot faster than students who are all over the place because you just you can't pay attention to that many things like for example if I gave you one phone number to memorize now if I gave you a number one two three four five six seven or whatever a phone number would be and I ask you to hold on to that in the RAM and the short-term memory of your mind. You could hold on to that fairly easily. But what if I gave you 12 phone numbers verbally right now? Just started rattling them off and told you to hold them in your mind. Do you see how at some point your brain's just going to give in and it says, look, I, I can't keep all that information at one time. You'd have to take a pen and write them down or something, you see? Because it's just too much to hold in your brain. Brains are not tra you know, uh, designed to hold that much information in short-term storage. Well, in the same way, your brain's not used to all these different traffic strategies. So the more room you give your mind to work on these, the more likely you're going to do well at that one particular one. Therefore, get better at it and save time so that you can move into the next one quickly. So the rule of thumb is, from 0 to 100 subscribers, I like to keep you focused on paid traffic. Uh, and I would use Fly Ads to do that. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is go back to our bullets for a second. Before I do that, I just want to get these numbers down for our next slide. Okay, so take a look. We talked about understanding conversions and where to get clicks for pennies. We're going to start utilizing solo ads and ad swaps. I'll get back to the free traffic sites in a second because I want to talk about solo ads and ad swaps. I think this is the really vital next piece that a lot of people miss. I'm really excited to be able to share this with you. So, once you've got 100 subscribers, what do you do with it? Well, remember how I said you want to get multiple uses out of your traffic by trying to have a viral link at the bottom? You know, I'm trying to get you the most for your time, energy, and money. So, if you have 100 subscribers and you have your product offers in the back end, you're trying to monetize those subscribers with product offers. But also, there's another way. There's actually two other ways to monetize them. And remember, we're internet marketers. We're market monetizers. We want to try to monetize the market whenever we can. So why just settle on your 100 subscribers as being 
only something that you use to monetize through emails? What if you could monetize it through different ways? Wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, I would hope that you would want to at least consider it. So you move from 0 to 100 subscribers using Fly Admin very inexpensively, very quickly, very easily. You just paste your URL in there and hit campaign and it goes. There's not a lot of complicated uh, you know, formulas or you don't have to write content first. You just use it. It's easy in and out. Now you're sitting on 100 subscribers. The first thing you can do with those is you can do ad swaps. And in order to understand ad swaps, I want to teach you first about solo ads so that you know what an ad swap is. A solo ad is simply somebody sending your link to their list. That simple. So if I have a list and you buy a solo ad off of me, that means that you'll pay for a certain number of clicks, let's say 100 clicks, at a particular price, and then I will send your squeeze page to my list. That's it. If you buy 200 clicks, I send you 200 clicks to your squeeze page. What happens after that is up to you because I can't guarantee you're going to get opt-ins. I don't know if your squeeze page is great or terrible. You know, I don't know the particular 200 people on my list that are going to hit that page. I just know I'm supposed to drive you clicks and our deal is done. So that's what a solo ad is. And solo ads can be very effective. An ad swap is a way to do solo ads without paying anything. And here's how that works. Instead of just paying money for a solo ad, in an ad swap, you're getting a solo ad from somebody else, but you're using your own list to swap with, meaning on a particular day, Tuesday, you're going to send your uh, you know, uh, squeeze page link to me so I can send out an email to my list. But I'm also going to give you my squeeze page, and you're going to send out an email to your list. So we're trading clicks. If you say, let's trade 50 clicks on Tuesday, then I say, okay, give me your squeeze page address, and you say, great, here it is. Now, Sterling, you give me your squeeze page address, and I give you mine. Now, we each have the other person's squeeze page address. We draft a little quickie email that says, hey, go check out my friend Sterling's site. That's what you would say, and I would say, go check out my friend so-and-so's site, and we would each drive 50 clicks to the other one. So now you're taking your 100 subscribers, and you're utilizing them as an asset to build more subscribers. And this, my friends, can be worth even more to you than using the subscribers you have to try to get sales out of immediately. What if you could parlay those 100 subscribers you have into a list of 1,000 subscribers, or 10,000, or 25,000? I know one of my VIPs back from 2008 did mostly ad swaps and built his list up to about 40,000 people. It took him a couple of years, but he did it. <coughs> Excuse me. So imagine taking this asset this first hundred subscribers and building it into a much much bigger asset so now the subscribers on your list have two values two functions one they can pay you money for a product or service that you send to them as an affiliate or two you can use them as bargaining chips in a way to get a bigger list and look you know you're given a free value this is not uh, manipulative this is not um, you know unethical nobody has to be on your list nobody forced them to be on your list you invited them to be on your list and they accepted willfully hopefully you're doing double opt-in so they double opted in willfully and they're getting the free report that you gave them and free offers and you're telling them about valuable products and services you might be also giving them tips if you have a VIP setup you're probably also giving them all the tips the emails that we give you so they're making out on this deal you're not doing anything wrong by saying look if you're not gonna buy anything from me maybe you can buy something from this other guy and I can use that to get a subscriber so uh, don't feel bad about it you're not using people against their will or something this is a business deal and you know hey they can hit the unsubscribe button anytime right and they walk away with the better end of the deal because they got a free report out of you and they gave you nothing so I want you to feel really you know comfortable doing this stuff because it's it's done all the time and it's an ethical honest acceptable way to build a list or of course I wouldn't be telling you about it so now you can take those hundred subscribers and use them as bargaining chips to build a bigger list because other people are going to want to have access to them so they're going to send solo ads for you as you send them for them in ad swaps then eventually you can build that up to hundreds of subscribers maybe even up to like 500 subscribers or more so now with solo ads and ad swaps you're free to to buy a solo ad at any time and the link to the community I'm going to give you in a minute allows you to do that you can buy a solo ad without paying for it in fact before the invention of money we had to do bartering. So if you went to the town square and you wanted a goat, let's say, you, you had to bring something that that person who owned the goat wanted to trade, right? You'd have to bring three chickens or a 
coat or something and just strike up a deal you know we still do bartering today so you'd have to strike up a deal but with money it makes it a lot easier so the reason I'm using that example is an ad swap is just a bartered double solo ad I hope you understand that because people get confused about ad swaps but most of the time they understand solo ads pretty easily you're buying a mailing to my list right just like if you bought a newspaper advertisement in the New York Times or you bought a 30 second commercial on the Super Bowl right it's the same thing you're buying a commercial on my list I will send you you know I will send your link to so and so many number of people on my list well you're just buying an ad like anywhere else it's a solo ad solo meaning I send out information just about you and nobody else now occasionally you'll be buying an easy ad where there's other ads in there but most of the time my experience has been solo ads most people mean them to be a solo mailing directly about you so an ad swap is a way to cut the cost out because I like to try to keep your dollars in your pocket where they belong and not you know make you spend a whole bunch of money on stuff that you don't need I prefer you keep that money so if possible if you can do ad swaps it saves you money from having to pay for solo ads now there's a downside to it because you're not going to be able to swap with much bigger people let's say you only have a list of 200 people but you want to buy 200 clicks well you're going to have a difficult time getting all 200 of your people to take action on the same day so that's why sometimes solo ads are, are better and look we, you know we have to be honest you have to be able to spend a little money in order to grow your business I am still perplexed by the number of people who expect to grow a six-figure business from home but when I tell them they need nineteen dollars a month for an Aweber account they lose their minds are you kidding me nineteen dollars uh, yeah man nineteen dollars it's not that big of a deal you know if you buy a hot dog cart it'll cost you a hundred grand and you're lucky if you can make a hundred grand with that. Uh, in this business, you can make a hundred grand if you do it right, and it doesn't cost you nearly that kind of money if you do it right. So, of course, I can't guarantee any signups or sales for anybody. Nobody can guarantee anybody's going to earn anything, just like nobody can guarantee me. But the point is, it's a very leverageable business where you can make small investments in your growth compared to other places where it needs tremendously large investments in your growth. Look, you're never going to have to paint your squeeze page even though you might have to paint the building that you operate in or if you have to pay hundreds of dollars every week for landscaping at the business that you run offline you don't have to do landscaping online you see it just saves you a lot of money it's a very leverageable easy business but you do have to be able to spend money sometimes so that's why solo ads are a great way to do it but if you can't afford solo ads try to do ad swaps to make it there and why do I like these so much well remember we talked about interstitial ads being cold traffic before well, solo ads and ad swaps are going out to people who have already subscribed to somebody else's list. You see, they are qualified, right? Somebody else has gone to the trouble to drive that traffic to their list. They've pre-qualified them. Look, if they weren't interested in what you had to offer, they wouldn't have got on the other guy's list, right? So the other guy already did the filtering ahead of time. He already sorted them out and said, look, these people, I can tell you, they're already interested in this kind of thing because I got them. So that's why they're more valuable because they're warmer type of traffic the interstitial ads from that you're gonna get from fly ads they're gonna be easier to get and less expensive because they're not as warm so you're gonna pay more money for a click from a solo ad provider or, you know than you are ever from an interstitial ad so the reason we use interstitial ads in the beginning is as a not a cheat but like a quick shortcut way to get ourselves some subscribers quickly so technically speaking as you are taking your hundred subscribers you got from Adfly and swapping them with the person who maybe has a hundred subscribers from you know really expensive paid ads a click is still a click but you may be getting a higher value click back from the person than the value of the click you're sending you see because maybe the people that you got from your fly ad campaign maybe aren't quite as qualified as the people that that person got from you know paying a lot of money for a pay-per-click campaign or something else right or maybe he got some of his list from doing solo ads and ads well from somebody else which happens all the time so uh, you know if you do find that your first hundred or few hundred you know I, I recommend people use fly ads up to the thousands if they can but let's just say you only used it for your first hundred they're probably not going to convert into sales as well as somebody who's a faithful buyer on somebody else's buyers list right who's been there for a couple of years and spent a lot of money but that's okay because remember in the beginning we want not just to have sales but more importantly we want to have an asset like a list that we can then turn into a bigger list so it's almost like a seed list or a starter list you see so you're not the value of your first subscribers is not really dependent 
that much upon how many sales you get out of them. They're actually worth more in some ways to be traded for a larger list. Does that make sense? I hope you understand that. Uh, it's a complex and subtle thing, but if you get it, you can see uh, you know that a lot of people just don't understand this and, and they, they oversimplify it and then they, they miss out. So we don't want that to happen to you. So you can go to the community over at adswapwith.me another redirect so in case we find that there's a better uh, program we can be a part of we'll flip that around for you and of course these are affiliate links so I may be compensated if you use them and if you decide to become a member of the AdSwap with me community you can find me in there and it's another one of the reasons that I use an affiliate link is because I get notified when my people sign up so you can friend me when you get in there or I'll friend you if you don't if I, if you don't beat me to it I'll friend you and then I can watch out for you and say hey how's it going and maybe I can introduce you to other recommendations that other people have told me hey I had swapped with so and so and he sent me a lot of clicks it was really good so we want to stick together so this is why I like to use these uh, affiliate redirects because I know who's using these services and then I can keep my eye on you which is very helpful so I say on these things what, 0 to 100 or 100 to 500. Now, of course, I don't mean to be so arbitrary. I just use these as a rule of thumb. If you want to keep using FlyAdMe to get quick traffic even during the next 100 to 500, of course, be my guest. I would recommend it. Anything that gets you there faster and easier, we want, right? You can even buy solo ads right from the beginning at zero if you want to. You don't have to, but you can't. However, you can't really do ad swaps until you have a certain number of people to swap, right? That's why they call it a swap. You need people to swap. So that's the only limitation you have around ad swaps is you need to get to, like, I'd say a minimum of 100 or so, uh, and then you can start swapping. And remember, your, your swaps are going to be s slow and small in the beginning. You might swap 15 clicks with one person and, you know, 20 with another. You might think, man, this will take me forever. But you got to build a reputation in the community, too. you got to be able to build a reputation where somebody says, I give this person a thumbs up. They did what they said they were going to do, and I approve of them. So other people can see the rep that you're building. And again, that's why these 15 or 20 person swaps, they're not necessarily just for sales. They're for positioning. Just like your first 100 subscribers aren't necessarily just for sales. They're positioning you for a bigger game, right? So keep the big picture in mind. Now that you're in the zone and you're starting to build into the hundreds, I want to tell you about another third powerful way that we started to use in the 500 to 1,000 subscriber range, and they're called safe list or viral list builders. Remember, gang, I could be teaching you so many different traffic strategies. I have over 50 of them written down that I've teach that I've taught over time, and there's a lot of them. And I have to be honest with you. A little side note here: in the beginning, as an internet marketing teacher, I thought it was my job to teach you everything. You know, I thought I had to be the walking encyclopedia of this kind of thing. But I found out that what you really want from me is not volume of information, information overload. You've already got information overload, right? What do you need more information for? What you need from me is actually less. You need me to filter and tell you from my point of view what you should not do just as much as what you should do. So before I tell you about Safe List and Viral List Builders, I want to talk to you a little bit about different types of traffic. We can talk about just straight up paid or swapped traffic then we can move up a level to talk about content based traffic oops sorry about that little typo we can talk about content based traffic and then we can talk about for example social media kind of traffic and we want to look at layers of complexity. So what the heck does layers of complexity mean? Well, when you start out, this stuff is new, right? And new things always take up more space in our brains than things that we're used to. If you remember the first time you learned to drive a car, man, it felt like a million switches. It felt like you were trying to drive a 747, you know, fly an airplane. The stick shift, everything over here, the brakes over there, the steering wheel, you were just a little overwhelmed, right? Because it was a new thing. But now, how many times have you driven somewhere and you had a conversation? You don't even remember driving while you were doing it because it's just such an automatic function. Now you drive safely and effectively, but you don't even have to pay that much attention to it. So it gets smaller in a way. You see, it takes up less footprint in your mind. It takes up less space. Well, in the same way, you want to take a look at layers of complexity in traffic strategies because one of the things about quick traffic that we want to 
make sure you understand is for it to be quick it has to be as easy as possible so if you add layers of complexity to it it's gonna take longer be more confusing more distracting and it has much more moving parts so that you may actually get one of those parts wrong so one of the things people don't really understand when I teach this stuff until I tell them one of the things they don't understand about the criteria I use to choose traffic strategies for my subscribers is why I choose to give you the things I choose to and when one of the major reasons is in the beginning something like fly ads is extremely easy to work and understand you paste your code in there your little you know your URL whatever your squeeze page address is you paste it in there you select the campaign you want and you hit send done one button easy right but what if you had to write an article first or record a video think about it for a second how many more steps are there in the video that I'm recording right now I have to have my slides ready I have to do the research I have to get my curriculum down I have to test it I have to get my Camtasia going you know I could be recording this but the mic it wasn't turned on I mean there's a thousand ways to die you know the more complex it gets there's a, a lot of more different ways that you can mess things up it's not as easy it's not as fast and it's not as uh, I don't want to say guaranteed to work but it, it's not as um, easy to do meaning there's less likely that you'll screw it up somehow right the more complex moving parts are the more likely you are to screw it up if there was a thousand steps the first couple of times we'd almost assuredly mess it up and not get get the result we wanted and we need momentum in the beginning we need wins right so we want to keep it simple you know how they say k-i-s-s -S. keep it simple stupid that's what they say so in the beginning we want to win I want you guys to take your first traffic campaign and get some subscribers wow it's easy I'm, I'm a list builder now exactly so we talk about these layers of complexity that content generation add and we see that in the beginning it's not a wise strategy I mean I don't want to tell you not to make to do articles and I used to recommend article marketing from the beginning but I found that it takes a while to master so I would rather from the very start you build up a couple hundred subscribers the easiest ways possible then start to go into content development then add the extra layer of social media so for example if you had social media and you wanted to say hey come check out my article or uh, check out my video now you've got to join the social media, get a following first on Twitter or something, then create the video content, then drive the traffic from social media to the video content, and then drive them to your squeeze page. You see how many extra layers of complexity it is? Not that there's anything wrong with those methods, but in the beginning, we want to keep it simple, as, as simple as possible to move you forward. And I think you basically understand what I'm saying. So now let's move into safe lists and viral list builders. Understanding we're trying to keep it simple and not too complex. What is a safe list? Well, a safe list is a list of people that's safe to mail to. So we say safe, meaning you can mail to them without it being spam. So if I just, let's say I went through the yellow pages, and imagine the yellow pages had email addresses in them. It doesn't, but let's just say it does. And I just strolled along and copied people's email addresses and put them on a big list together without them knowing it, without their permission, without even finding out what their interests are, just randomly grabbing a thousand people's names and putting them on a list. Is that list safe to mail to? Of course the answer is no because they didn't give you permission, they didn't opt in and more importantly it's not a relevancy uh, list. There's, they're not all interested in one thing. You know, If I want to sell dog supplies to them, how do I know every one of them has a dog? How do I know that they're interested in dog stuff? You see? So they don't have relevancy and they don't have permission. So that list is not safe to mail to. In fact, it's dangerous to mail to and you shouldn't build spam lists. You should build opt-in lists, double opt-in permission-based lists. So a safe list is a site where a guy or a girl says, I'm going to put together a, a list on purpose. And the list's purpose is for you to be able to be a member of it and mail things to it and also receive mailings from it. Kind of like if you go to an open mic night at a bar you take your guitar in there and you want to sing for everybody you'll notice that a lot of the people in the audience also have their guitars why because they too want an audience of people so it's kind of like guitar players playing for other guitar players now that has its pros and its cons some people might say well a safe list just sounds like a bunch of people trying to sell stuff to a bunch of people uh... you know that's dumb well maybe so there's going to be maybe a diminished return because of that but at the same time some of the most active buyers are sellers 
right? Sellers buy a lot of stuff. So these are action takers. And remember, they had to get themselves on the list and qualify and do all these things. So it's, it's it really actually makes a lot of sense to use it. And a viral list builder is just a different version of a safe list. So uh, I'll show you this link in a second that you can find a whole bunch of them at. But you have this opportunity now to join this list and you will receive emails from everybody on the list every day but you will also be able to send your offer and your offer will go out to that same group of people and some of those people may join your list and buy from you it's happened to me it happens a lot i know people who have built thousands of thousands you know tens of thousands of name lists strictly using safe lists and nothing else so it works so there's actually a site called trafficzip.me that not only gives you access to a safe list but it actually isn't a safe list itself. It's a safe list management tool. It's a site that allows you to join 20 or so different popular safe lists right through that site and then manage all of your mailings through that site. That means that if you're a free member of safe list A, let's say, safe list A says you're allowed to send 2,000 emails every four days, right? That's your free membership. Or if you become a paid member, you're allowed to send 5,000 emails every two days as an upgraded member. So whatever you are, a free member or an upgraded member, it doesn't matter. You have to keep track of when you're allowed to do your next mailing, right? That's how they work. If you're a member of SafeList B, that might have a different combination. 4,000 emails every three days or something, right? It gets kind of complicated after a while to manage all that, especially manually. And if you miss going in to send your email, you missed your window and then you have to, you know, you, you missed the mailing and you missed a couple thousand people that could have seen your offer. So using Traffic Zip is an excellent way because it logs into all of them for you and counts them and auto sends when it's time for your next mailing. So it's kind of like a robot that does it all for you. So you just submit your little your little email uh, in there, you know, like here's your free downloads or something if it's a free report just put that in the subject line here's your free downloads and then in the body copy hi comma here's your free downloads and then put your link that's it you don't need to make a long one in fact the longer your email I believe the the more it's gonna work against you because in a safe list situation people are reading a lot of emails every day they don't want to read a long long email they appreciate it when you send them a short one so here's your link they'll say okay let me click it you know many of these are also called credit based safe lists that means that people earn credits to send more mailings by reading these emails so they're opening these emails and clicking on the links to earn credits too so there's even more incentive for them to open them and it's more incentive for you to keep it short and sweet right so by automating the process with traffic zip now you can have your fly ads running you can be a member of the community of the ad swaps and be booking ad swaps with people or buying solo ads as well and you can have your viral list builders and save lists on autopilot now, out of the 40-some or 50 different traffic strategies I've ever taught, I promise you that these three, and in this order, have returned better results for more VIPs than any other combination that we've discovered so far. And as I said before, does that mean by the time you watch this video that these are the ultimate best strategies ever of all time? I can't tell you that. I don't know. I just represent a community, and the community speaks and this is what we've learned so far it's our best practices to date right and I use these three affiliate links these three redirects because I know what you're looking for when you go there so if for example we find a better interstitial ad provider I'll redirect on it so you'll still get it same with the ad swap community same with the viral safe list and viral list builders so I'm trying to do you a service by giving you a, a domain name to go to that even if we change later our provider you'll still be able to be redirected no matter what because I want you to be able to get there no matter when you watch this video so that combination of very inexpensive and easy to get interstitial ads ad swaps that are targeted because they're people who have already opted into somebody else's list and or solo ads as well and safe list and viral list builders automated with traffic zip it's probably the quickest way that I could say you could get to a thousand subscribers than any other way that I personally know <clears throat> in internet marketing. How to utilize free traffic sites effectively is I think the most important next thing I can tell you guys. And the way to understand free traffic sites is that it costs either time or money to get traffic. And I'm used to enough people saying that they're trying to keep their budget small or sometimes they say their budget is non-existent so I really look for other ways 
other than money to build a list. So free traffic sites are a way to sort of, as we said earlier, it's like a good cheat. It's like a little shortcut so that you don't have to use money. You can just use time instead. So whether you're using a traffic exchange where you're going to click around for uh, points, you know, credits so that you can show your other sites, or a JV giveaway site, and I'll explain those in a minute, or a forum, you have to understand that you're trying to use those to build your list in such a way that you can start to see sales come through and then parlay those sales back into the business, plow the profits back into the business and buy much more quality traffic. So in the beginning you're trying to get a leg up. Not everybody starts with free sites. Some people go immediately to solo ads and they buy thousands and thousands of solo ads and they build a big list right away. But if you don't have that kind of money, well that's okay. Then you just try to use the free sites as effectively as you can as a substitute. So let's take a look at some of these extra credit ways that you can do that. So forums are free. You can go post a message on a forum, make a blog comment or a forum comment, but make sure it's valuable and helpful. Don't say anything stupid and don't be highly overtly promotional. We're in the middle of a conversation about something. You come in and say, hey, get my free report, everybody, because it's interrupting and there's no value to it and you make yourself look bad. So if you're going to use content marketing by doing comments on blogs or forums, uh, that takes a little bit more time and a more of a subtle touch, but you can do it. Another great way that you can do that's free is JV giveaways. That's where a person puts together a bunch of different gifts from different people, such as yourself. So you offer your free report on your squeeze page. I offer mine and a hundred other people. So now there's a giveaway where it's a hundred free gifts giveaway and it happens for a certain week period of time. And that person advertises, come to my site and get a hundred different gifts from a hundred different marketers. And yours is one of them. So that's another great way that you can you know get into some qualified traffic and just use Google to search for JV giveaways and you'll find some. Twitter is another great way it just takes a little bit more leverage and a little more complexity to use it but if you start following people who are in similar uh, niche as you maybe follow some people who already are building lists in that niche follow the people who are following them. I'll say that again if you have a competitor a person who's, let's say you're a dog trainer and you're trying to build a list of dog training interested people, then maybe you go to some other dog trainers Twitter accounts and start following the people who are following that dog trainer. Because if they, if you follow them, there's a large likelihood that they'll follow you. And that's a free way to get some targeted traffic, uh, potential targeted traffic, because the people are on your following as well. And then you can send out a notice, <clears throat> you know, every once in a while, download my free report, or I would love to get your opinion on my free report, or uh, you know, maybe make a point, reply to somebody else's feed. If they say, sometimes dogs are hard to train, you say, I sure agree with you. In fact, on page 7 of my free report here, I talk about that. So you can sort of work it in, but it, co it causes a little more, you know, it costs a little more time and energy to focus that right. But Twitter is another way to get targeted traffic. And another overlooked way to get targeted traffic is traffic exchanges. And these are places where people sort of like a viral safe list but they agree to view each other's sites not view each other's emails they view each other's sites and you can get in there put your site in the rotation other people can see it and click on it maybe become a member of your list so it's a much slower process traffic exchanges and it's really for people who don't have any funds at the moment but it want to still use their time they have more time than money that's okay everybody has that situation sometimes they can use traffic exchanges as a great way to leverage their time and turn it into money by clicking on a lot of different links and earning credits. So hopefully that makes sense. So I think the biggest point about traffic that I want you to understand is getting traffic can be easy, but trying to find ways to get traffic can be very difficult. And I want to eliminate all that trying and flailing around and researching by giving you the exact quick start traffic strategy plan that we use when new people join us for Power Month or for VIP setup service, we give them this, and it is the quickest way to get subscribers that I know of. In fact, if you go to our community site marketer link, where all of our uh, VIPs and all of our Power Monthers all gather together, you'll see that people are posting in real time that they're getting subscribers and sales. So you see up here in our um, ticker at the top of our Power Month page. I have people reporting in real time. Here's a gentleman from the UK says first sale just happened about 15 minutes ago, seven dollar sale. And here's a young lady who's saying uh, she posted an update that her list was zero. Now combined, she has 440. Uh, 
awesome, loving it, she says. So, you know, this this works. This is the best way. All of these people I check in with every week. Here's a gentleman whose numbers are up to 1,125. So we check in every week and we share what's working. You know, we find out what each other are doing and report that in and then find out you know, some other people will use that information, go back and work it on their list and come back and find out. Here's a gentleman who got uh, 51 new subscribers in a day. So I just wanted you to see that it works. And you can see this ticker live for yourself at powermonth.com anytime you want. So I hope overall tonight you got the gist of it. You know, I teach this stuff very, very differently than I taught before. I used to teach the everything. I used to teach here are all the ways you can get traffic, you know. And I even did something called the total traffic package where I went in detail for eight weeks and spent hours and hours on each individual strategy. And that's great for people who are more advanced and want to learn all of the ways. But in the beginning, less is more. Focus, focus, and then focus some more. Because the more of the junk and crap that you cut out, the more focus and energy you have to do the thing that you're doing effectively. And remember, some of these particular strategies, you know, they take a little while to get good at. You know, you might post your first fly ad and say, okay, uh, I get it, Sterling, I got some traffic coming in. What's next? What's the next thing? Well, listen, man, there is no next thing. The next thing is, go back and do it again, but get better at it. Which deal are you going to do? Worldwide deal, proxy deal, English-speaking countries, non-English-speaking countries? You know, which uh, time of day do you want to send your stuff how, how many thousand uh, clicks do you want to buy at one time these are all different layers of complexity that you can use in your favor to learn how to use the site so just because you did one doesn't mean you get it right it just means you got started and you have to respect the complexity of each one of these things respect that they can be learned they can be mastered I mean where else do you expect to just go and do something one time and be great at it did you ever pick up a tennis racket and just say okay I played tennis one time I get tennis I do tennis yeah but you could be so much better at it that doesn't mean you're you're done with tennis you've mastered it it's a completely you know everything is a world everything has its own little world and so solo ads they're different than ad swaps they're different than viral safe lists so safe lists uh, you know can be different than paying for fly ads. I mean, there's so many different things to learn that you must focus. You must put yourself in a zone and say, I'm going to do this first and only this. Then I'm going to add this to it and learn this. Then I'm going to add this to it and keep going. And when you get to a thousand subscribers, you're in a very different place. So I hope this is the uh, thing that you were looking for. It's the quickest way that I know of to get you quick traffic and most importantly, we'd love to have you as a member of the community if you're not already because we want to find out what you're working on. You know, we're each a reporter for the other one. If you remember, King Arthur used to have the Knights of the Round Table, right? He would get together and the knights from all the other kingdoms would sit at his table and advise him. If you've ever seen Donald Trump on The Apprentice, he doesn't just sit there by himself. Who, who's he with? He's got two people, one on each side, that he asks them and leans over and says, Caroline, what do you think of this person? What do you think, uh, you know... Uh, and he has different advisors because he wants to make the best decisions. So why would you go it alone? Become part of our communities. You can find out more at sterlingvalentine.com if you're not a member already. And join us. Put your head together with us and, and let's find out together what are the best ways to get traffic because these ways are the now. But tomorrow, there may be a better way. And do you want to get left behind and not find out about it or do you want to stick with the pack? And when, you know, when one, one benefits, we all benefit. So... I'm starting Valentine. Please keep in touch and let me know how the quick traffic strategies work for you. Talk soon.